Craig, I think uh, most people outside your lab wonder how diseases spread. How do they get around? You know, diseases have the capacity, or at least the organisms that cause disease, to get around just about every way you can imagine. They can be transmitted by aerosols that you might cough or sneeze out. They can be transmitted uh, through uh, fecal matter like diarrhea. They can move around uh, using an insect like a mosquito to take a sample of blood from an infected person and inoculate another person. So I think you'd find uh, just about every possible way that humans interact or that or that we can interact with even intermediaries like insects, a disease has found a way to exploit that and uh, get from one host to another. And as you mentioned the term interact, how did the uh, transformation of humans from hunter-gathering societies to an agricultural world affect disease and how it gets around? I think one thing you have to consider with diseases is they just don't spontaneously arise. There has to be what we call a reservoir for the disease. This is a place where the disease hangs out when it's not in, infecting really uh, a, a person. And so domestic animals can be a big reservoir. Has agriculture allowed po human populations together in large numbers? Then you could have diseases that could sustain themselves in the human population. That became the reservoir. Like the common cold today, uh, it's just found, our population is so big, it's just found always in a few people and can spread to others. So. Those two factors, I think. Um, does, does the way a disease get around uh, affect how nasty it can be for humans? There is that possibility. Diseases that, that, that don't require the person to transmit them, like uh, African sleeping sickness, for example, they requ it requires a, an insect to transmit the disease. Then that person can be completely debilitated and the disease can still get around. So it depends on the nature of the disease. Cholera is another good example. Uh, you're expelling uh, large amounts of diarrhea. It's not really necessary that you be out and be ambulatory. You can be quite ill. In fact, it's usually beneficial. So uh, you can draw some correlations between uh, how nasty a disease might be and uh, the method of transmission. Do, do diseases f develop ways to uh, transmit themselves through the way they affect the behavior of the people who are sick? Well, that's a good question, Gene. And what uh, we often don't realize is the things that we call symptoms when we have a disease, like coughing or sneezing, are really induced by that mm -hmm. disease agent to uh, allow it to get around. Uh, the uh, influenza virus is transmitted by the aerosols as it irritates uh, the respiratory tract as our body tries to to get rid of it, we shed it that way. Cholera irritates the lining of the intestines, causes loose stools and diarrhea that gets in the water system. Once again, it moves around that way. And maybe one of the most interesting ones is rabies. Here's a virus that infects yeah. uh, generally benign, non-aggressive animals. And uh, be, once it gets in their brain, it, uh, it causes a pathological response that induces bizarre and aggressive behavior. I mean, when's the last time an insectivore bat flew down and attacked you? <laughs> well, it, it just doesn't until it's rabid. And then when that bat bites you, you have the possibility for rabies. So the symptoms become part of the, of the, the scheme, part of the genius. All a disease organism is doing is moving from one condominium to another. To, uh, to, to the organism, you're just the host. You're the place where it lives, where it gets its nutrition, but it's got to move after a while. And it uses the symptoms of the disease to move from one person to another. Craig, why are some uh, microorganisms, millions of them, I guess, out there, why are some benign and even beneficial while others are pathogenic? You know, to us, they, they appear to have some kind of ulterior motive to uh, uh, make us sick and even kill us. But to the organism, they're just looking for the right environment that's tailor-made for them to live and grow in. So it really is dependent on your physiology and uh, the chemistry. If the human chemistry and physiology, your body temperature, the pH of of your blood and all these other factors fit the growth parameters for the organism, then it's going to want to be there. Now, there are some organisms that like to move around a little bit more than they, they induce these kind of symptoms and these kinds of issues that, that uh, cause us to call them disease-causing. The vast majority of organisms uh, don't. 
They have no interest in this. So it's really a very small subset of all known microorganisms that cause human disease.